Hey everyone, this is Paul and Maggie. Hi. But we are here at Bush Gardens. Safari is back open and we are going to take a trip. Train getting all sanitized. Some gazelles. <laughs> you might catch yourself on YouTube. Oh, sure. oh good. We should let Thomas do this one. He's the performer. <laughs> appreciate it that is how we're keeping everyone nice and as socially distanced as we can back here on these trucks um if at any point i do need to move you guys around i'll obviously give you instructions at that point but in the meantime just hang tight where you are um anytime this truck is moving please make sure you guys are not doing that so stand still and make sure you're holding on to the side mm -hmm. anywhere along the side is fine the metal the wood or the fencing down here um it's sanitized between every single tour so don't worry i got all the germs last time uh but just hold on and keep your feet on the ground anytime we're moving. Uh, Thomas, our driver, will come to complete stops every once in a while for you guys to check out some animals. At that point, if you'd like to move within your section from one side or the other, please feel free to do that. Just wait until the truck is perfectly still before you decide to move. I know people get really excited and they're like, oh my God, an animal. And then <laughs> go across the track, the truck hits a bump and down they go, that's bad. So please stay still until we stop. If you happen to drop anything off the side, literally anything at all, even if you don't want it back, if it's like a piece of paper, you're like, I don't need that. I still need to know if I don't notice. Um, our animals, we don't want them eating things that they should not eat. So please just let me know if you drop anything, absolutely anything off the side of the truck, and we will do what we need to do to get it back and back into your hands if you'd like it back. While we're out there, please feel free to ask any and all questions. I can stand out here and talk at you guys all day. I do it all the time. Um, but if you're interested in something in particular, I would love to know it. So please just ask questions, have a good time out there. We're gonna see what we see. Are you guys excited? Yeah! yeah. All right, so go ahead and hang on to the side of the truck. It is our turn to go. Perfect. We are good, Thomas. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. That's right. We're going to wave goodbye to our other friend. Woohoo! And make a brief safety stop right here at the spot. Go. We're good, Thomas. All righty, just like that, we are off. We're blazing five miles an hour. Watch out. Things get crazy out here. We are actually, if you guys can believe it or not, in our very first animal habitat. Um, it's going to extend all the way past this coaster in front of us. So if you don't see the animals yet, don't worry. The animals that live here are pretty good at camouflaging and hiding, so keep your eyes peeled. They're over the hill. We are good, Thomas. We also like to stop there to make sure our coaster isn't coming. Uh, we fit under it just fine, no problem. But it's loud, and sometimes things fall out. So it's better. 
do have at least one of them right here behind me. I'll have to pretend the truck. There is a herd of them out here. So keep your eyes peeled for the rest of them. These are going to be our Nyala antelope. Nyala are, of course, calling antelope species. So like I said, they are very good at camouflaging and hiding in the trees. Especially on a hot day like today, they are going to be spending most of their time in the shade. Wow. <laughs> but they are going to all just look like that. The one we saw back here, uh, the nice copper orange colored fur with those really pretty white vertical stripes. So our herd out here is all female. We had a male out here who actually looked a lot different. Uh, and that is something we consider sexual dimorphism. Big fancy phrase. The boys look different than the girls. We do have a male out here in Bush Gardens, uh, but he lives in the behind the scenes area. So he's going to be a little bit bigger. He's also going to be gray and have a shaggy beard and a nice set of horns on his head. It does seem that the rest of our Nyala herd is hiding from us. But we're going to come back through here on our way back to the dock, so hopefully they'll be out and out for you guys to check them out at that point. For now, we're going to keep moving and see what else we can find. Everyone keep holding on. We are good, Thomas. Like I said, they are really good at hiding. They are all out here. All right, so welcome to the South Belt. You guys might hear me in front of the belt a few more times with this field or this place. Out here on the South Belt, it's going to be home to the stars of our show. You guys look at those really tall, lanky animals out there. What are those? Giraffes, yep. But also out here with the giraffes, we're going to feed a few species of antelope. These small and brown animals right here off the wall from the side of the truck. These are our impala. Have you guys ever heard that name impala before? Have you heard it? <laughs> Do you guys know why they might name a car after an animal? They are fast, yeah, they're really fast, really agile, they're going to reach out to you. These white antelope are our Adax antelope. Uh, they are going to be one of the most endangered and rare animals you guys are going to see out here today. These white animals, the Adax, are native to the Sahara Desert, which is why they're that nice bright white color. It does help them reflect sunlight off their bodies and keep them nice and cool. Um, unfortunately, as of 2016, it was estimated there were only about 100 of them left in the wild. So, to put that in perspective, our herd is going to have somewhere around 15 individual animals at any given point. Um, 100 out in the wild is not very many at all. We do have a youngster amongst that herd. He's hanging out right over here off the passenger side next to this palm tree. He's going to be the little white guy with the shorter horns. He is the only male out here right now. The rest of them are female. So this is one of those antelope species along with our elands, the big brown animals around us. Both the males and the females will have horns. Our eland are really cool. These are the common eland. They are one of the largest antelope species in the world. They're going to top out right around 2,000 pounds. Uh, but don't let that size fool you. They yeah. can move when Point necessary. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be yeah. able to run anywhere around 40, 45 miles an hour at top speed. They won't usually have to run that fast, um, but they can if they want to. We do have a male. He's sitting right here closest to us on this passenger side of the truck. The way I know he's the male is going to be by the shape of his horns. They're going to be a little bit more twisted at the base, giving them more of a U shape as they reach the top. All the females are going to have these V-shaped horns. We're going to keep moving and head into Rhino Country. We'll come back over and visit our giraffe friends and the rest of these animals on the second half of our tour. So go ahead and keep holding on for me. We're good, Thomas. The Elan, um, over in Africa, are raised in many places similarly to what we have So I like to say they are essentially African cows. We are going to be entering Rhino Country, so keep your eyes peeled. There she is. There she is. That's right. So under the shade. The driver's side of the truck. Oh. Hanging out over there under her shady structure. That is Jody. Everybody say hi, Jody. Hi, hi Jody. Jody. Jody is our female black rhino. She does live in this habitat all by herself, but do not feel bad. She's not lonely, I promise. Black rhinos are actually solitary animals out in the wild, which means they do like to live alone. Um, the only time you would see a black rhino with another rhino in the wild is if a mom had a baby, or if a male and a female were together um, when they were going to mate and hopefully make a baby. But other than that, they do spend the majority of their lives alone. So she's very happy in this habitat all by herself. Uh, on occasion, some of the animals on the north belt over there will walk around our watering hole and come and say hello. But for the most part, it's just her and then when the keepers come out to see her and check her out. So I did say she was a black rhino. Does she look black to you guys? No. What color nope. is she? Red. Yeah, she's like orangish red. Uh, so over to the left, she does have a nice big mud clay kit that she likes to roll around in. Uh, it is very similar in texture to what she would have over in Africa. It's just Georgia clay. We ship it down directly for our rhinos. Why do you guys think she might want to roll around in the mud? 
Keep cool. cool. Keep cool, yeah. Anything else? Camouflage. Uh, so not so much camouflage. Keep what? the flies off? Yeah, yeah, it keeps your skin nice and moisturized. Keep the bugs off, exactly. And then the other thing it's gonna do is help protect your skin from the sun. Nice sunscreen, so it is kind of like an all-inclusive spa treatment for them. She does, especially Jody loves to roll around in the mud, so she, I always call her our big Cheeto. <laughs> Go ahead and keep holding on. We're going to keep moving and see what else we can see. We will come back through here and get to check Jody out one more time on our way back over to the south. Well, we're good, Thomas. So black rhinos are going to be the smaller of the two rhino species we have here at Bush Gardens. Jody weighs just over 2,000 pounds, uh, but her species is going to range anywhere between two, three, maybe closer to 4,000 pounds with some of the males. But they are, believe it or not, at that size, one of the smaller species. We're good. <laughs> so we are over now on our north belt. We're going to see some of the different species of animals out here. Hopefully, we are able to spot our own species of animals. We were out and about from the center earlier this morning. I hope they still are for you guys. Uh, those little birds over there by those palm trees behind me off the passenger side, they do just look similar to ducks. They are actually a gypsy Uh As close as we are right now is as close as I ever want to get. dust cloud from space. So that is one way that scientists are able to track right that migration you. without actually having yep. to be on the ground in Africa following the wildebeest is that they can see the dust cloud from satellite imagery and know which way these animals are headed. So pretty cool. Wildebeest help lead that migration because they have what I like to call a superpower. They are actually able to smell something that tells them which direction to go in. A lot of people do believe they can smell water or smell the rain. That's not actually true. Wildebeest are able to smell phosphorus. So when plants grow, like all the grasses that they like to eat, they do release phosphorus gas into the air and our wildebeest are able to smell it. So that's how they know which direction they should be traveling in. Because where there's grass, there's food and where there's food, there's usually water, which is exactly what these animals need. Close by to them are gonna be some of our zebra. If you guys peek all the way out in front of the truck, back by that oak tree, you'll see some of our common zebra hanging out way over there. It is pretty common out in the wild to see zebra and wildebeest running together uh, because they are gonna be at the front of that migration. The zebra are gonna eat all the really tall grasses and then the wildebeest are gonna come behind them and eat the little short pieces that not everybody wants to eat. So very, very helpful, great teamwork out there in Africa. Behind our wildebeest over there under that big oak tree next off the driver's side, you'll see some of our ellipsin water buck. Um, it's hard to see from here, they are behind that hill, but as we round that corner, so they get their name, they have a white ring on their hindquarters. So as we round the corner, see if you can check that out. Yep. With a name like water buck, where do you guys think they live? <laughs> Near the water, yeah, exactly. They do have an oil, that they secrete onto their hair that makes them almost water resistant. Um, they will run into the water to escape predators and to cool off. And then once they get out, if they're being chased by something, they're not gonna be all waterlogged. They're gonna shake off really quickly and keep running. Whereas a predator, if they were to follow them into a river or something like that, 
Uh, most of the predators in Africa are big cats or are hyenas. They're going to be really waterlogged and not be able to run quite as fast anymore. So it's a good survival tactic for our water buck. Go ahead and keep holding on. We're going to keep moving. We're good, Thomas. Check out those zebra again as we round this corner. Uh, I said they were the common or plain zebra. The way I can tell that even from this distance is going to be by those really thick stripes of theirs that are going to wrap all the way around their tummies. If we're able to spot our other species of zebra back up on the south belt, you'll see they look a little bit different. The common <laughs> zebra are going to be one of the smaller species of zebra. So those stripes are going to help them look bigger than they are. They're also going to help them all blend in as a herd when they're running together. Making it harder for predators to tell where one zebra starts and another one stops. Across the watering hole, we have my favorite animal species. Those are the sable antelope. They are actually the national animal of Angola over in Africa. But they are very defensive animals. So most other animals out here, if something's chasing them, they're going to run away. Our sable will actually stand their ground and put up a fight with those really big horns on top of their head. Those horns with the females are going to reach anywhere between three and a half to four and a half feet long. And our male's horns are going to go about another foot in length, somewhere close to five and a half feet long. Behind me, we do have my absolute favorite animal out here. The giraffes are cool and all, but I absolutely love these guys. These are our white rhinos, our southern white rhinos to be specific. So immediately you guys might notice a difference between them and Jody, our black rhino. I told you guys that Jody was a solitary animal, right? Yeah. Are these guys by themselves? <laughs> no. No, yeah, the southern white rhino are going to be the only social species of rhino in the world. So they are going to live out here in this herd, which we call a crash. So that's your trivia fact of the day. Another name for a group of rhino is a crash of rhinoceros. Hmm. And then I'm, I'm going to make the lame dad joke that it's because they are the size of a small car. So it's like a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to top out somewhere around four, 5,000 pounds, maybe even a little bit more with some of the males. Our largest is actually a female. Her name is Lucy, and she weighs right around 4,500 pounds. Yikes. So she's a big girl. Our male Tongo is this gentleman right here in the front for you guys to see. Um, he's going to weigh somewhere around 4,300 pounds. They're going to fluctuate just like people do, um, but that's usually where he tends to hang out around. So unfortunately for Tombo, uh, Lucy's a little bit too big for him. They don't get along too, too well. And she's actually pretty protective of the other females out there. So she's not in the best mood. And he's trying to come up and ask one of the other ladies on a date. She tends to kind of get in the way and walk his path. It's, it's relatively amusing to watch. But that is kind of how rhino mating works. He's going to initiate some sort of um, sparring altercation, a little bit of a fight. She's going to fight back because she wants the male that she mates with to be big and strong to pass on all those great, strong, awesome genes. So if he wins the fight, I'll get to claim his prize. If he does not, which happens sometimes, um, unfortunately for him, he just has to walk away and hang his head a little bit for a while. Uh, we have noticed some mating behavior out here over the last few months, which is a great sign to us. To us, that says our animals are happy and healthy because the last thing you're going to want to do if you're not happy is have more of you. <laughs> so the fact that they are out here showing us some um, breeding behavior is really, really cool. So hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed, in the next few months, we might be able to find out we're going to have some baby rhino. That would be very exciting. Rhino out in the wild are endangered. So for us being able to have babies here, it's really, really exciting. We get to learn more about them and hopefully take that knowledge over to Africa and help bring those species back. Go ahead and keep holding on for me. We're good, Thomas. Does anyone know why rhino are endangered or a main reason? Poaching. Poaching, yeah. Do you guys know what they're poaching them for? Uh, that horn, uh huh? Does anybody know what rhino horn is made out of? Ivory. So that's a common guess because of the elephant tusks. Um, rhino horn is actually made out of protein called keratin. It's the same stuff that's in our hair and our fingernails. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the silly thing. They're killing them for something that we have on our own bodies. There are still places in the world where they think it has medicinal purposes. It doesn't. It'd be like grinding up your fingernails and eating them. It doesn't really do any good. We're good, Thomas. So a lot of our job, especially here and over in Africa, is to educate people. To teach them why they don't need that rhino horn on their wall. It's not really important. Now with that being said, you guys might have noticed our rhino horns are all kind of different shapes and sizes, especially Jody's. Really, really short on their face. Yeah. Uh, that is a grooming behavior. They do do it themselves. They just shave it down with rocks or trees or habitat, you know, whatever size and shape they prefer. Jody just likes hers really short. Um, we suspect it could be because she's in there by herself. She doesn't have anybody to protect right now, so she might just not like the weight on her face. We're good, Thomas. Do you guys have any questions so far?
that uh, pickup truck that was out there with yep. the wallabies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what was he doing out there? So our keepers come out throughout the day. They do lots of different stuff. Sometimes they're out there picking up poop. Sometimes they're out there laying more um, hay and different types of feed out there. They'll come out and put some things that we call enrichment out on the habitat. Mm -hmm. uh, easiest way to describe them is they're kind of like toys for the animals. I don't always like to use that word toy, but that's the easiest way to describe it. It gives our animals something else to do, something to see that they might not normally see, something to stimulate some natural behaviors that we might not always see out here. So they're doing lots of different stuff. They come out multiple times throughout the day. So Thomas is going to find us a really good spot to stop. Once you get that, I am going to ask that you guys remain where you're at. Um, if the giraffes come up to the truck, which they are usually really good about doing because they know we have a nice cold yummy treat for them, I am gonna ask that you do not touch our giraffe. They're coming because they want the lettuce, not because they want to be scratched like your dog. <laughs> but on a hot day like today, they know we have a really yummy treat for them in the floor. So giraffes are really small. Where do you guys think they get their food from? Cheapers. Trees, that's right. So you guys are all gonna do your best impression of a tree today. Once I hand you a piece of lettuce, you're gonna hold it up as high above your head as you can. Yep, and they're gonna take it from you, especially Miss Cupid. She will not wait. So as soon as I hand this oh. lettuce to you, hold it up nice and high. Cupid is our second oldest female out here at 22 years old. She just celebrated her birthday back in February, right around Valentine's Day. Her and I actually share a birthday. We're birthday buddies. So just like that, you guys are going to hold it up nice and high for Miss Cupid. Go ahead and hold it up. And you're welcome to step a little bit closer to her if you'd like. Let her have it. <laughs> And we'll get to this way. Oh yeah. Hi, How you doing? <laughs> also hanging around out around the truck, you guys will spot that other species of zebra I was talking about. Those are the grubby zebra. There you go. So take a look at Cupid's tongue as you guys are feeding her. Do you notice anything weird about her tongue? It's like purple, yeah. So that is extra melanin, the same stuff that everybody has in their skin. Uh, gives us all our different skin colors. Cupid and other giraffes just have extra of it in their tongue. It does help protect their tongue from the sun as they do spend a good majority of their day with their tongues outside of their mouths. Go ahead and take a step up. It also feels weird. It is a little rough. Yeah, some people say it's kind of like a cat's tongue. That's going to be to help them grip onto whatever it is they're trying to get off a tree. Leaves and different things like that. There you go. So what else do you guys notice about her tongue? What is she able to do with it? Around. Yeah, she's so. able to wrap it around this lettuce. So giraffes do what we call a prehensile. They have a prehensile tongue. Prehensile uh, just means finger-like, basically. So just like we're able to grab onto things with our fingers, she is able to grab onto stuff with her tongue. A pretty handy feature when you don't have fingers. You also see, it almost looks like she's wearing some eyeliner. If you look closely at her eyes, uh, that is gonna help her so she can't wear sunglasses out there like I'm wearing sunglasses right now that is gonna help uh, keep the Sun out of her eyes almost like sunglasses you'll see she has really big pretty eyes that we want to protect so giraffes have great eyesight they can actually see very very well up from for miles away <laughs> so they have earned themselves the nickname of watchtower out on the savannah it's very, very common for smaller and other animal, uh, for other animals that are much smaller than them to be hanging out around our giraffe. Um, that it is on purpose for safety. So they know the giraffes can see better than they can. They know they can see much farther. So I always say, if you're over in Africa and you see the giraffe running, you should probably run because they have probably seen something that you cannot see. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to grab another head of lettuce for you guys. Here. You guys have any questions about Cupid or any of the giraffe? So while she's eating, if you guys watch her, her neck, you might be able to see the food go all the way down. Giraffes do have really, really long necks. Nice bones from there. The baby out here. So we do have two young sir. Um, I don't see them right now. Sometimes they take them off to go. They might be visiting the vet or something like that. Uh, um, and we did just recently have a brand new baby. Yeah. Yep. So um, he's in the back still hanging out with mom. She's doing her mom thing and getting all acclimated to having a baby. And then um, in a few months, they'll probably put them both back out of here on the belt. But we do have two youngsters that are usually out here. Like I said, I don't see them right this second, but that doesn't mean anything. They're probably hiding behind a hill or something. Um, they both just turned two. So Angel, our youngest, our oldest baby, baby, 
Uh, turn two back the day after Christmas, and then Patty is the youngest, and Patty's actually Cupid's young old, current calf, and she yep. turned two right around St. Patrick's Day. So Cupid at 22 is actually a great ah, mother. Yummy. You guys can believe that. So she's still having babies for us, but she does have some daughters that have also had babies out here. <laughs> I feel like it's still going. So with those super long necks, how many bones, how many vertebrae do you think our giraffe has in her neck? 24. 24? That's not a bad guess. Do you guys have a guess? How many bones do you think she has in her neck? I'm going to say zero. You think she has zero bones? She's going to have bones. No, it's all there. muscle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one big so muscle. Does anyone, okay, I'll ask this question. Does anybody know how many vertebrae humans have? No. So we have seven vertebrae in our neck, um, as does Cupid, the giraffe. So giraffe also have seven neck bones. They're just a lot bigger than ours, but just the same number. All um, mammals, all vertebrates. I'll say, have seven bones in their neck, um, except for manatees and sloths. And I believe there's one other animal, but I can't remember what it is right now. Okay. So even though she's super, super big, uh, she has the same number of bones that we do. So we are running low on some fuel. We're also running out of time anyway. As I stand here and hand her these last few pieces, do you guys have any questions about Cupid? Why are the trees covered? Why are the trees covered? That's a very good question. So you see that she's trying to eat every little scrap of everything I have in my hands. Uh, they will do the same thing with the trees. They really like the bark. And on these trees that have that type of bark, if she strips, if they were able to strip all the bark off the tree, those trees would die. So instead of having to put ugly man-made shady structures out here, um, we do like to save our trees. No, I don't want to trees it. have a different type of bark and they don't usually try to eat as much. So we don't have to do that. Yeah, good question. I'm fine. Do you guys want to know how I tell them apart? Yeah. Yeah, so they all have individual markings. These are reticulated giraffe. Reticulated means net-like. I'm getting there. Um, so they get that name from that net-like pattern on their bodies, and that is how I'm going to be able to tell them apart. With Cupid in particular, though, the easiest way is she is the tallest female. Um, and then her two ossicones, those two horn-like structures on top of her head, they come in at an angle. So that's the easiest way from far away to spot Cupid. But other than that, we do look at their chest markings, and that's how we're going to be able to tell them apart. Awesome. All right, so we're going to get moving. That was my signal from Thomas, and I'm basically out of food anyway. I'm going to give her these last little bits. And then we're going to get going. So everyone go ahead and hold on to the side for me. Perfect. I don't know if you're going to you just hold these for the one. <laughs> I have made a mess, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, Thomas, we're good. Them. So you might have noticed she takes that, kind of pushes it towards the back of her mouth. She does have teeth in the front, but only on the bottom. And then in the back of her mouth, almost up under her eyes, she's going to have two sets of molars. So she's also going to use that tongue not only to grab onto the teeth, but to shove everything towards the back of her mouth so she can chew on it. Her bottom teeth in the front are mainly there to be able to strip leaves off her branches. So when little kids, little kids come out here and they're kind of afraid they're going to bite them, I said she couldn't bite me even if she wanted to. <laughs> she wouldn't want to. So see, this is that one for us to get space in the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Ruby. She's actually my favorite giraffe because she's a little fun. Uh, she's super picky. So when we feed her the lettuce, you guys saw how I gave Cupid both ends of that lettuce and she like ate it right up. Ruby would not have touched that. She doesn't like the hard pieces of lettuce. So she's going to eat all the way down until she gets to that hard part and then she'll go and spit it out. She has hit people in the face with the lettuce before. It's kind of amusing. That's just lettuce. Obviously, everybody was fine. We're good, Thomas. She's also actually the only giraffe out here that was not born here for Charlie. So we'll be taking this from another zoo. But all the other giraffes out here right now were born here. Um, our newest male who helped us have that new baby giraffe is not out on the belt right now. Um, he's still back in the back. His name is Titan. I can't wait for them to bring him out because uh, he's so cute. He's like 20 feet tall and he's a little darker, kind of like Ruby. And just, he literally towers over everybody. <laughs> With a name like Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Ooh. Did you guys all have a good time? Yeah. yeah. Did you learn anything new today? Perfect. And we all so far have made it back in one piece. Yeah. So far. We have a little bit more to go, so uh, <laughs> knock on wood. Uh -oh. I'm telling you, the whole herd is out here. They could be up over that hill, like you said. There are some hanging out back here in the trees. I saw some up against the fence line. 
but they're really, like I said, they're really, really good at hiding. Yeah. But yeah, so they're like scooched to either side, so you were, yep, you guys are fine over there. Oh. He just needs to keep the center clear oh. so that he can see out the back window. Thank you. We're good. So as he's back in this truck, and I do want to take this time to thank you guys so, so much for coming out on safari with us today. We all had a good time. Yeah. Um, but just by coming to Bush Gardens and especially by coming out on these tours, you guys are helping us to support all of the conservation efforts we participate on, participate in, excuse me, all over the world, um, helping to support the SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund, which is super important. Over the years, we've been able to rescue and rehabilitate thousands of animals, and we wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that we do here with keeping these animals happy and healthy, and I wouldn't be able to do my job, which I absolutely love, if it weren't for you guys. So thank you so, so much. We really do appreciate it. Go ahead and give Thomas a big round of applause for driving us today. Thank you, Thomas. So I am gonna open this gate and put that ramp back on. Please don't pull the ramps on before you try to jump off my truck. As much faith as I have in you guys. <laughs> oh, what can I do? I don't want anyone getting hurt. Um, if you guys have stuff in the locker, don't forget it. Come back and grab it out of the locker. The only people that might get hurt are these. We're fine. Whew. It's warm. <laughs> so we're